Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Navigador, which is set in the glorious age of discovery as players help Portugal expand its glorious colonial empire. Hi Tula! Hello, she says. No, Tula, there's no treats. Sorry. Okay, so now let's just jump right into it. Although, wait, actually, before we do, I should mention one thing. I am playing the game with a variant. It doesn't really change anything about the flow of the game, doesn't change any of the rules. The change is that for a two-player game only, there are a few less potential colonies to found in the world. You'll notice I was supposed to put three gold producing colonies here in Western Africa, and I've only put two. Now the reason I'm playing with this variant, is this is how Jen and I always play, is because it was suggested on Board Game Geek by Tom Lehman, the designer of Race for the Galaxy. He had uh, crunched some numbers on the game and recognized that in a two-player scenario, the victory points you can get from founding colonies is kind of a bit stronger than the victory points you can get from factories and exploration and everything else. And you know, that creates in a two-player game a sort of race where everybody's trying to get the most colonies they can. You know, they have to compete very hard for that, but it also means you know, you know, there's a little bit less flexibility in how you want to pursue the game. Everybody, if they want to stay in the game, has to pursue colonies, arguably. Now, some people on that thread said, oh no, Tom, you're crazy. But actually, for the most part, everybody just seemed to agree, yeah, there's nothing wrong with, in a two-player game, there being a required race where one particular path to victory is more powerful than the others. Jen and I like it where all five paths to victory are equally viable, so we're using Tom's variant. If you'd like to know more about it, I'll point you to the thread on BoardGameGeek in the show notes for this video. But like I said, this is not going to change anything about the flow of the way the game plays, so if you don't want to play with the variant, don't worry, you're still going to know how to play the game. And with that, let's play the freaking game, shall we? Alrighty. Uh, for starters, here I am. I got my own little player board. I'm the green player. Now I start with 200 bucks. I've got a king's favor, which I won't use until the very, very end of the game. I've also got one factory. It's a wild card factory that can pr process sugar, gold, or spice. Normally the factories have to specialize, but this one can do anything. I've also got a shipyard where, because I have one shipyard, I can build one ship for 50 bucks, and then it costs me a whole bunch more to build additional ones. And I've got one cathedral that lets me hire one additional worker for 50 bucks. And then again, I can hire more, but it costs me a lot more. The more cathedrals I have, the more workers I can hire cheaply. The more shipyards I have, the more ships I can build cheaply. Okay. And Jen's got the exact same thing, nothing unique other than, since I'm the first player and she's the last player, she gets the special Henrico O Navigador tile, which she will use to good effect later. And we actually trade this back and forth throughout the course of the game. But anyway, so Jen's last, she'll have the bonus action Mr. Navigador provides. But speaking of actions, let's do some, shall we? Okay, I am the first player. And you can see I've got two ships up here just outside of Portugal waiting to explore this vast world and set up colonies and do all kinds of stuff. So what's the first action I'm going to do? Well, there's a whole bunch I can do. I can go sailing. I can hire workers. I can go to the market. I can set up colonies. I can get privileges. I can build ships. I can go markets again. I can build buildings and sailing. And of all these actions, I think the one I'm going to choose to do first, right off the bat, since this is all about navigating the world, I'm going to choose to go sailing. And so I take my green marker and I put it on this spot on what's called the rondelle. And I'm declaring sailing is where it's at. I'm doing sailing. So let's come over here and sail now. I've got two ships. Each one of these ships are capable of moving one zone. So I can you know, move them to Guinea or I can move them to ba Baia. And normally, if these zones had already been explored, if there weren't these little blue things here, I could say, oh, I'll have this guy over here, I'll have this guy over here. I could have them both go to one or I could both go to the other. However, when a zone has yet to be explored, it's very, very dangerous. And to move into it, you have to move in with two ships and lose one lost at sea. So I'm going to start out, I'm going to move my two ships. All my ships can move on space, so I'm moving my two ships as a fleet down here to um, this West African coast, Guinea. Now that means I'm the first person here. I get this exploration token as a reminder that I'm doing some exploring and you know, uncovering new parts of the world. And so that's my reward for that. I also, like I said, I lose one ship 
So it's just lost at sea, never to be seen again, but I've still got one, hooray. And then my other bonus, there's several bonuses for being the first to explore a new land or a new region. You get the chip, you well, you lose your ship, but then we reveal all the colonies that could be established here in Guinea. And in this game, and like uh, yeah, in this and like I said, if we were playing the full rules without the variant, there would have been three colonies. There, so there'd be more colonies to choose from, but in a with this Tom Lehman. Variant, there are going to be two colonies here in a two-player game. So the colonies, there's an $80 uh, dollar gold colony and $120 gold colony. The last bonus I get whenever somebody explores a new land is you take the lowest value colony, in this case 80, and you get that much money from the from the Portuguese government as a thank you for you know expanding our reach and finding new places to set up colonies. So I just got 80 bucks. Not 120, but 80, whatever the lowest price is. And now that was my first move. Lost a ship, but I made 80 bucks, and I got this token, which will be worth bonus points at the end of the game. Okie doke. Now it's Jen's turn. Let's see, and what's she gonna do? Now she could go on ahead and go sailing as well. Just go right here, but she's gonna do something else. Her first move is she is gonna come over here and build some ships. She wants to build a, a, an additional ship or two. And so she'll do it. Now, because Jen has the Navigator card, when she chooses a spot on the board the first time, she takes this little marker here to indicate that she, you know, this is a countdown timer. She, um, every turn, on the following turns, you're going to see we start moving clockwise around this counter and do additional actions. Jen will have until all the way around the circle to use her Navigador. If she makes it all the way back here and hasn't used the Navigador yet, she loses it and gives it to me. So that's what this is here for. It's just a reminder that Jen has at most one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight actions she could do, but probably less. We'll see how that goes. This, like I said, this is a reminder. You'll see it come into play later. So. It's Jen's turn. She is choosing to build ships, so let's have her build a ship. Now, you recall, both players, or all players, I should say, start with one shipyard. That means for 50 bucks, Jen could build one ship. Now, she could build more if she wants. And let's see, where is that? That's up here. Because we are in phase one of the game, all our ships can only move one space. As you saw, I demonstrated my ships move one space. And whenever you are hiring workers or building ships, you, you, get your, you can get all the ones you get for 50 bucks, depending on how many buildings you have, and then you can get additional ones for an extra 100 bucks. Now that's pretty expensive since we only started with 200. So Jen could spend 150 bucks, 50 because of her shipyard, and then 100 for a second one, and get two ships, but she's only gonna spend 50 bucks and get one ship. So she's getting one additional ship. It comes from her supply. As you see, she's got three of them docked up here in Portugal. That was her whole move. Okay, now back to me, back to my movie. Come back to the rondelle, and now I'm gonna do something else. Now, the way that, you know, when we, we started the game, we were at the beginning at the middle of the rondelle. We'll never be in the middle again. From now on, every time we do an action, we always move our little marker any number of spaces clockwise that we want and do that action. So if I wanna to go to the market, I'd move one, two spaces. If I want to go get workers, I'd only move one space. And if I wanted to go to a colony, I'd move one, two, three spaces. Now, the first three spaces are free. They don't cost anything. But if you move beyond three spaces, you start having to pay. So if I wanted to take privilege, since that is one, two, three, four spaces, I would have to pay one additional to get there. And what do I have to pay? I have to pay ships. I have to literally pull ships off the board and put them back in my supply. So if I wanted to say, I can do workers, market, or colony right now. I could also do privilege if I remove my final ship from the board. I'm not going to do that. So I'm, and you know, if I wanted to build ships, I'd have to move two ships from the board. I, don't, I can't do that. So from sailing, I'm going to choose, since I just moved over to the Guinea coast, I'm going to move one, two, three, and set up a colony. And so we come back over here, and remember there are two colonies I could set up, the one that costs 80 to set up, and the one that costs 120 to set up. I will spend 80 bucks. As you recall, I got 80 bucks for finding this place in the first place. I'm going to spend the 80 bucks to found the first co Portuguese colony of this game, a gold producing colony. Now the amount of money I spent doesn't matter at all. So you wanna spend as little as possible. So you wanna get there first and get the cheaper one. Cause now if Jen wants to come here, she's gotta pay 120 to get the same thing that I got for 80. And my 80 was basically free because the government you know, funded me. Although I did lose a ship. So anyway, I now have one gold producing colony. Now I could create more colonies, like I said, you know, I, I've got 120, well actually first of all, this is gonna cost me 80 bucks, I already paid that. I've still got 200. I could pay 120 more, but 
to produce additional colonies, I need additional ships. Basically, if I come over here, this is a really handy dandy player aid that you know, basically breaks down all the requirements for every single action. If I look over here at colonies, you know, if I do a colony action, each new colony requires that I have two workers in Lisbon and one ship in the same region. Now here's the problem. I've only got one ship here. If I had two ships, I'd have enough, I, you know, each ship could make one colony. I don't lose the ships, it's just, that's a minimum requirement. I have to have at least one ship and two workers per colony. So, if I had another ship, I could do it, but I don't have enough workers. At the beginning of the game, everybody starts with three workers. So, if previous to this, I had gotten a fourth worker, and I had built another ship for my colony action, I'd be able to build two colonies at once. But I can't do that, but that's an example of, you know, you, you really want to get to a position where you can do multiple actions in one turn, because you have a lot of stuff. But right now, it's early days, so we're just doing quick actions. I chose colony. I, I built the cheap $80 colony here in Guinea, and now it's Jen's turn again. Let's see now. Jen, what is she going to do? She is, let's see, she's going to spend one, two, three. She's not going to pay extra. She's going to do three. She's going to go sailing now. And that means every one of her ships can move one space. So this ship will follow the, the path, the trail I blazed, and get down here to Guinea. But it can't go any farther. These two will blaze a trail to Baia, to the, to the new world, basically. So now Jen has gotten one of these bonus chips, or bonus discs. That means she can get bonus points for having discovered new lands. And she loses a ship, like I did earlier. And now she's going to reveal three colonies. And a bit of bad luck for her. It's a 50, a 60, and a 90. So she gets 50 bucks as a way of the government saying thank you. I got 80 bucks for mine, she got 50 bucks for hers. In general, the sugar plantations you can find out here are not as valuable across the board as the gold plantations you can, or not plantations, sorry. Well, I guess they were plantations out there, but whatever. You know, the sugar colonies are not as profitable as the gold colonies you can find in Africa, and those pale in comparison to the exotic spice colonies you can set up in the Far East. But we'll get to that later. So anyway, so Jen has toes in sailing, and she has actually moved into two regions, gotten a bonus, 50 bucks, and she's muscled in on my territory there as well. And that was her turn. So coming back to me, it's my turn again. And, and remember, Jen is getting closer to having to use her Navigador before she loses it. Let's see, now I think I, I could go one, two, and start building some ships because well, if I want to explore further south, I'm going to need another ship, at least one more ship, so that I can, you know, because I lose one every time I go into a new zone. So I can do that, and, you know, I could really start pushing hard to expand my fleet. Alternatively, I could, let's see, I could buy a privilege. And that means coming up here and getting, you know, the privilege of Alfonso de Albuquerque or Vasco da Gama or Francisco Javier or, you know, whoever these guys, you know, these guys, which will mean, you know, say I get the Vasco da Gama. I take this. I put this over on my board, and that means at the end of the game, every one of these discs I have is originally it's worth four victory points. Now it's worth five victory points. So that's what doing a privilege does. But to do a privilege, I have to lose a worker. And then if I lose workers, it's harder for me to do other stuff. So I'm not going to do a privilege right now. Now I could build a shipyard. I could go to ships and I could build a ship so I get my second one so I could explore more. But I think, um, I think I instead am going to go further or yeah, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go and do a market action. I'm going to go to the market and try to make some more money. I've got 200, but I'd like a little bit more. Okay, so let's talk about the market. This is register, you know, up here. There's three markets actually, well, four really. There's a market for sugar, where you can see the current value of sugar is at 50, the current value of gold is at 60, and the current value of spices is at 70. Now, I have one gold colony, so I can start, I can sell gold into the market up there. Also, I have one factory, which means, uh, and remember, this is the wildcard factory. So I can process one type of good. So I'm going to do both those things. Uh, basically, every time you do a market action, you can do one action in sugar, one action in gold, and one action in spices. And that could be either sell stuff from your colonies into it, or use your factories to process stuff. I'm going to do both those. First of all, since I've got a gold colony, I'm going to sell me some gold, which means the marker 
is currently at 60. That means I, I've got, one, if I had like three gold colonies, I'd get 60 times three, I'd get, you know, 180, but I've only got one. So I'm gonna get 60 bucks from selling gold. Whee! And now this, I can do this over and over again. I don't lose my colony. I'll have this for the rest of the game. So I, I, I've, I've done that action, and now for every colony I have, after I've done the sale, the marker moves down one. So since I only sold one, it moves down, and now gold is only worth 50 in the market. Also, remember, I get to do a processing action. So I can either, so we get, Portugal currently has some sugar and some spices and some gold sitting around ready to be processed. I've got this factory that can process anything, and I think, so what I want to do is, do I want to drive up the value, because when I process this stuff, that means there'll be less of the raw materials, and the price of them will go up. I think I'm gonna process some spice, and so I'll use my wild card to process some spice, which means, this is what this bar is for, currently spice is at 30, so I will make 30 bucks, one, two, three, for processing spice, and after I've done the processing, the number of factories I've used towards that moves the marker up. I only used one factory, so it's gone up. It, you know, it didn't cross over, so spice is still stayed the same, but I'm starting to drive the value of spice up. So when eventually we get over to the Far East and start collecting spice, we can make a real premium. Now, why did I not drive up the, the price of sugar instead? I could have processed sugar. I, I would have made 30 bucks just as well, but here's the reason I didn't. Jen is currently got the leap. She's, she's over here in the new world. She is in a position to get sugar colonies faster than me. So if I drive up the, sugar, the price of sugar, it's benefiting her more than it benefits me. So that's why I've driven up the price of spices instead. So anyway, that was my first of many visits to market. You can see on the Rondell, there are two market spaces. Market, going to the market is very, very important. It's, it's the main way you keep getting enough money to do all these additional things. So anyway, at the end of all that, what did I get? I got 60, 70, I just got 90 bucks. Okay, and now it is Jen's turn. What is she gonna do? Let's see. Now, she could go straight to one, two, three, and you know, found, uh, found colonies like I did. And she's in two places. So she has the potential to found two different colonies. Um, but to do that, well, she needs a ship in each zone, which she has, but remember, for a colony, you need a ship and two workers. So she needs another worker. So she's gonna do that. She is gonna move only one space and hire a worker. And remember, because she has one cathedral, she can get one worker for 50 bucks. Okay. And uh, so that means she moves up here, up to 50, or I'm sorry, up to 50, up to four. So she's got more workers than me now. And she could hire more workers, but they would cost her a lot more. So she's just gonna stop at the one. And I think maybe I've made a mistake here. Oh, I did. Oh, I did not play this very smart for Jen. I did not look ahead. Because here's what I was thinking. Now that Jen's got the workers, she's got the ships, when she does her colony action, she will do the, she, you know, she'll need 120 plus 50, so she'll need 170 to be able to get both of those colonies in one move. However, she now only has 150, so she's gonna have to do something about that. But that'll come in a second. First of all, it's my turn, and now I think I'm gonna build me some buildings. Because I made a lot of money, it's time to build some more buildings. Okay, so. I, let's see, buildings, I'm sorry, they're over here. There are five types of buildings I could build. I could build more cathedrals, which means I could hire more workers in the future for cheaper, which you know allows me to found more colonies. It also makes it easier for me to buy these privileges and stuff like that. I could build me another, what do you call it? Shipyard, which means in the future, it'd be cheaper for me to build multiple ships at once, because you can see how you burn through ships really fast. Ships let you explore into new regions and you lose them. Ships also let you pay to, to do extra actions, you know, move farther on the wheel. However, I need to have at least five workers or four workers to build these. And remember, at the beginning of the game, I only have three. I haven't gotten any more workers. Jen could build herself a shipyard now. I can't. So I'm limited to building either sugar factories to process sugar, gold factories to process gold, or spice factories to process spice. Now, I think I'm gonna build me a sugar factory, which as you can see, it requires three workers, which I've got. Now I don't lose those workers. The only way you lose workers in this game is by buying privileges. So I don't lose these workers, but uh, because I've got this big enough workforce, I can build a sugar factory and it costs me $50. $50. Okay, so I lose 50. And let's see, 
build new buildings, pay for the price. And you know, I could build more buildings on my turn, but I would need more workers because the, th the three workers I have back in Lisbon spent their whole turn building this. If I had six workers, I could have built two sugar colonies or you know, a sugar colony and a gold colony. Or if I had seven workers, I could have built a sugar colony and a shipyard, etc. But I didn't have enough workers. So you can see why workers are really important. The more workers you have, the more colonies you can found in a single move and the more buildings you can build in a single move, which in turn, you know, build your engine faster. But anyway, so I basically, with my amount of workers, I, my workforce, I can only build one building. And now I've got myself two factories, a sugar one and a wild card that can be used for anything. And now it's Jen's turn again. So she wants to go to colony, but she doesn't have enough yet. So remember, there's two markets on the board. She's gonna move one space and she's gonna to go to market because she needs a little bit more money to, uh, to you know, be able to found these two colonies. Now, unfortunately, Jenna doesn't have any colonies, so she cannot sell anything into the market. However, she does have you know, her wild card, whoops, which I've just dropped, oh dear. Oh my goodness, sorry about that. She does have her wild card factory, which means she could process and make a little bit of money, either gold, sugar, or spices. And remember, we, you know, as players, we don't have to provide the gold, sugar, spices. There are other explorers who are adding this stuff to the market. Right now, Jen is you know, not selling stuff, she is processing stuff. So, remember how I sold some gold and that made this come down? That means now, if you process gold, you make 40 bucks instead of 30 bucks. So Jen's gonna do that. With her wild card, she's gonna process gold and make 40 bucks. One, two, three, four. 40 simoleons for Jen because I made it easy for her because there's just real synergy. You really wanna pay attention to what your other players are doing. If the other players are flooding the market, selling a bunch of stuff and driving, you know, driving this thing down, that's when you wanna be processing it because you can make a lot more money on processing and vice versa. Like I said, real synergy between the players here. So anyway, so Jen has done that. She processed one, got 40 bucks, and now because she used one factory, she did one process, it moves back up, and now processing gold is only worth 30 again. So that was Jen's turn. Now it is my turn again. Let's see, and so we come over here. I'd like to go sailing, but if I do, oh, I can't explore new regions because I only got one guy. I could come sailing over here, which means in the future I'd be able to set myself up a colony, a sugar colony. What else could I do? I could come over here and get some workers, because remember, I need workers. I could come over here, one, two, three, and I could go to the market again, but I just came from the market. If I wanted, I could go one, two, three, four, which means I could, get, I, could, I could do another colony. I could get to this colony before Jen does and kind of corner the early market on gold. Because I've got the money, I've got the workers, but I need a ship as well. And to be able to move one, two, three, four spaces, I'd have to burn a ship, that'd be my only ship. And then I don't have a ship, I can't do the colony. So I think, Let's see, either I'm gonna sail over to the new world so I could set up a sugar colony, or I'm going to kind of put that on hold for a while and start trying to build up my worker force so I can do more stuff later. I think I'm gonna be a bit more short term. I'm just gonna go sailing. Since Jen's already discovered a new world, I'll come over here with my one dinky little ship and I'm gonna try and set up uh, next turn a sugar colony. Now, back to Jen, her turn, finally, she's gonna set up her colony and she's got everything set up just so with her two ships in the place. So, set up a colony over here. She needs two workers and a ship. She's got four workers, so uh, there's 120 bucks she just made, or spent, to get her first gold colony. I paid a lot less for mine. And with her other two workers and her other ship, she'll set up this $50 sugar colony over here. And there's her 50. So that leaves her with 20 bucks, but at this point, with one colonization action, she got two colonies. And you'll notice she's running out of time. Before too long, she had better, yes, she had better do um, her navigator action. Anyway, back to me, back to my turn. Now I've moved over, I'm just going to go on ahead. I, again, I could hire workers, but I'm just gonna try and colonize really quick. I'm just trying to go quick um, with my one ship, see how far I can push it. So I just jump over, where was I? I was just sailing. One, two, three, I can do that. I don't have to lose anything. And I'm over here, I'm gonna pay 60 bucks for a, and use this one ship and my two workers to get a sugar colony of my own. So 60 bucks leaves me with 140. Okay, there's my 60 and my ship and my workers. And so now I also have two colonies like Jen. And I've also got a lot of, uh, of, a lot of money that Jen doesn't have. However, Jen's got two ships to my one. 
So that's that. Let's see. So that was Colony. And now Jen, she'd like to do privilege. She would. She would love to do her privilege. But the cheapest privilege she could buy right now would cost her 30 bucks. If she wanted to buy the green privilege, it would cost her... Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. That's not... It doesn't cost you. Let's look at this. It's such a handy dandy thing. It doesn't cost you. Um, where is it? Privileges. Pay one worker and take one privilege. And bonus, newly covered coins give you that much money. So this isn't how much she has to pay to get the privilege. This is what the reward she gets for the privilege. So I think... Um, yeah. Okay. I think she will do the privilege. And so she's going to get one of these. And she has to decide, what does she want to push her bonus points up in? Does she want to get better at, because you see there's only one of each right now. Does she want to get more bonus points at the end of the game for exploration, for building factories, for having colonies, for having shipyards, or for having churches? Well, she's already got a couple of colonies. Let's say she's going to push hard on colonies. So she's going to grab this one, comes down here, and she gets 30 bucks. So she doesn't get as much money. But, so she's kind of deciding early on that she wants to make a concerted effort to get into the colonization business. Okay, and now that was the end of her turn. It's my turn again. And, let's see. I think I'm going to... Oh, oh, but remember, Jen loses one worker to get that privilege. But she had that one worker, so she could do the double colony thing. Now it's my turn. Do I want to get a privilege as well and burn one of my workers? Or, you know what, I think I need ships. Uh, yeah, I think it's... I'm going to skip privilege now. I'll come back to that later. I'm going to go one, two, and get myself a ship. And I'm going to build more than one. I only have one shipyard. So that means for 50 bucks, I can get one ship. Hello. And it's up here in Portugal. But I got money. So I'm going to spend 100 bucks to build a second ship up here in Portugal. So that they will be, I'll be set up to be able to explore new zones because there's uh, more new zones to explore. So that was my turn. And now it's Jen's turn. This is the turn where she's going to cross the line and she hasn't used Mr. Navigador's power yet. Now, I kind of lost track about that for a second, so hold on a second. Actually, I forget. I, the, he lets you do one free sailing, but it is, uh, the car's going to, actually, yeah. The usual rules for sailing are fine. Okay, yep, that's what I thought. So, I, I forget. Jen can do the Navigador thing on anybody's turn, anybody's turn. So if you have this, you could like try to jump into a zone before your opponent does on their own turn. So, at the beginning of my turn, before I built that ship, Jen said, wait, 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 wait. Before you build your ships, I'm going to use Mr. Navigador, which means she gets a, it's as if she just landed on shipping. She gets to a shipping app. So she hands this to me. And then, you know, what was I? I was at, I was at a colony, I think. Was I? Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, no, I was at, well, whatever. Yes, I was at a colony. So before I moved over, Jen says, I'm doing this. And she's going to do a free action. She's going to take this guy and move it down here and this guy and move it down here. What that means is two guys were moving into a totally new area. Even though they came from different places, they're moving into the new area. And so Jen has gotten the reward of exploring and finding a new land. Of course, she loses one of her ships. And she will get... Oh, this is actually a relatively good uh, turnout. So she'll get 70 bucks, the lowest cost one. Uh, 50, 60, 70. And, of course, she handed me Navigador, so it's my turn. And so on my turn, I built ships, as you saw, and so on. So now all the sugar colonies of the game are exposed, and there's going to be, well, there might be a race to grab them all so that, you know, somebody might be able to corner the market on sugar so they can make a ton of money whenever they want to sell sugar. And then somebody else, if, if somebody does corner the market on sugar, uh, what do you call it, sugar... Uh, colonies, somebody else really wants to corner the market on sugar factories so that they can benefit whenever sugar goes down, they can push the price back up. Or alternatively, a player who gets a bunch of colonies could also get the matching factories so they could drive prices down and then push it back up themselves. Now that's the core of the game, trying to find the synergies because in this game you generally want to find t you know, one or two or sometimes three. You're like one main thing you're pushing and then one additional thing you're trying to get as well. And then you know, you're trying to get points all over the place. Anyway though, if you'd like to see some more action as I try to do that, you can hit the button that's on screen right now to watch the extended playthrough and we'll play through a few more rounds. Alternatively, you can hit the other button and go straight to final thoughts. Your call in five, four, three, two, one.